time now for one full hour of Nitro Fuel NHRA talk. It's the Straight Line, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts with Marty Huff and 10-time NHRA winner Doug Herbert. Brought to you by Hercules Tires. Now, here's your hosts, Doug and Marty. This is the Straight Line on Drag Racing. Thanks for being here for our one hour of horsepower. Appreciate you being with us. We'll share a little history of the sport and funny cars with reigning champion of the division, Del Worsham. And we'll talk racing and everything in between with our good friend, Clay Milliken. We're in the beams and set to launch another edition of the Straight Line. Wherever you may be, coast to coast, around the world, this is The Straight Line on MRN.com. Along with four-time IHRE Top Fuel Champion and ten-time NHRE National Event winner, Doug Herbert. I'm Marty Huff. Good to see you. you you've been one busy dude. We've been around a little bit, yeah. We had a, <laughs> I took Mimi and her girls camping over the weekend. We had a Kardashian girl thing. Oh, boy. You know, and... You know, we're not talking about young kids. They're 25 and yeah. 22. They wanted to go camping. They'd never been camping. Mimi never been camping. So I was like, let's go camping. Yeah. And it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> he says with a the smile. The funny thing is, when we left, I said, well, you guys want to go do that again? They're, oh, yeah, absolutely. So well, I was shocked. Good. I didn't. I figured they'd be like, one and done. No, no, let's go back. We haven't went on a snipe hunt yet, so we're going to we're gonna work that in the next, <laughs> yeah. next trip. Yeah, sure. It'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. that will be good. And then you had the, uh, coming up on the uh, program, we uh, will be talking to Clay Milliken. And uh, you were face-to-face with Clay yesterday. here yesterday, or uh, a couple days ago. Yeah, a couple days ago, uh, went over to Memphis and spent the day with Clay and his family. We went and visited Clay's uh, high school, his local high school yeah. there uh, in in his town in in Munford. And gosh, the next town over, I'm I I can't remember my own name. I got to wake up in the morning and look at my driver's license. But <laughs> it was uh, it was a lot of fun. We talked to a couple thousand teenagers, and we're having our class over there in yep. Memphis in August, yep. uh, the August twenty seven, twenty eight weekend. So. Uh, we actually announced that on the show a few weeks ago. So yeah. we uh, the registrations are filling up. So if you're in Memphis and you got a teenager, go sign up. The whole deal is in memory of Clay Sen Dalton. Uh, we're going to try and teach some of those kids about being a little safer. Yeah, it, great, a great program uh, that's coming up in in August. Uh, put on the brakes dot org for more information. Uh, one of the things that uh, NHRA has uh, done since the beginning of the season, and something that Fox picked up on. Uh, is it, this is the 50th anniversary of the Funny Car in NHRA competition, and they've uh, Fox has been asking, and NHRA has been asking uh, drivers about their five top five favorite Funny Cars. And even though you're a dragster guy and have been, you know, for, since day one. I mean, you, well, you're I like a funny cars. They burn nitro and they yeah, have no superchargers. Doubt. I like funny cars. <laughs> you know, so, I, 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 I'm friends with Jack Chrisman. He was one of the first funny yeah. car guys and good friends with Dino Don Nicholson. Uh, he was a buddy of my dad's forever and used to come visit all the time. Uh, and he was one of the first funny car guys. So two of the very first funny car guys I knew yeah. and friends with. I don't know why I never raced a funny car. I get asked it all the time. It's like, well, I, I, I don't know. You know, top fuel's. Just look more like a race car, and, yeah. and I always had to pay for it myself, and so I wanted to go as fast as I can, <laughs> and top field cars were always quicker and faster, so yeah. it just made more sense to me. So you came up with your five favorite, not necessarily in any particular order, uh, you know, front to bottom, but we came up with a list of, of yours, and so uh, we're going to go with those right and now. And again, they're not in a particular order. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to really think about it to decide who was my favorite and who was my least favorite out of these five cars? I've seen, uh, I was able to see all these cars run, and I always yeah. thought it was yeah. cool. Yeah, right. So Raymond Beetle Blue Max car, that was a cool car. It was just a cool car. And they won races, and he was kind of always a little bit of a rebel, you know. And oh, yeah. I didn't really know that at the time because I didn't know Beetle at the time. And, you know, after that, I, I, I met Raymond Beetle several times. He'd always come to the races in, yeah. in Dallas and down there. And so sure. I got to meet him. Uh, but he was always like one step ahead of everybody a little bit, you know? And so that was yeah. cool. And yeah. uh, so the Beetle car was my number one. Second on my list, and like I said, no particular order, Jungle Jim Lieberman, I just thought that was a cool car. Jungle no Jim. No doubt. He was just cool. And, he, you know, and Pam, uh, Jungle Pam backing him up. And that, you know, I mean, being a little <laughs> yeah. kid, it was like, yeah. wow, look at that girl. Yeah. And so it was cool. 
and I think people related to that because it was cool. People relate to funny cars, and they especially related to those funny cars because they look like cars. It, 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 yeah, no doubt. Um, a little bit later on in the program, uh, I went back and looked at John Force's uh, top – well, if, it, it was supposed to be a top five. It ended up being about a top seven or eight. You know, I mean, it's, it's Force, and he's yeah, just yeah. going all over uh, crazy. It, and Jungle Jim was on his list. He told a really cool story about Jungle Jim, of course – you know, he really didn't have much of a – he wasn't much for time, you know, or right. schedules or anything like that. He showed up late for a match race at, uh, at Orange County, and Force was going to race him, and Force is, you know, burned out and, and everything. He just pulls in, Jungle Jim does, gets it off the, the trailer. They're not going to let him on the track. So he goes down the return road, does a burnout, and right down the the front of the stands, right in front yeah. of everybody, while Force was going down. Here goes Jungle Jim Lieberman. I mean, just no, I mean, he those, was a showman. Yeah, I mean, he was a yeah. showman, and he that's the kind of stuff he did. And they had Jungle Jim may have been one of the first ones to have two funny car, you know, a two team yeah. funny car deal. Yeah, Claire Sanders, which Claire's been a friend of mine forever, drove Jungle Jim second funny car, yeah. and he might have had other drivers. I don't know, but I know. Claire was he, he one was of the, the main drivers. ones. Yeah. And Claire is a cool guy. He was actually a regional manager for Snap On. Oh, when really? I, was I didn't with know that. Yeah, yeah, Claire was that? with Snap On for like 30 some years. So, huh. really, uh, you know, pretty cool deal. Yeah. Uh, and, and then third on the list, okay, probably one on, of the most historic cars out there. Well, and the technology on this car yes. was something. Dell Armstrong, that, you know, that Budweiser. Uh, the Batmobile. Batmobile. I mean, yeah. that looks almost like the current funny cars. And we're, I mean, right. that's almost 30 years ago, yep. you know. So that was pretty cool. I remember seeing that car and going, wow. I mean, those guys are really doing something. And Dale Armstrong at the time was running, uh, you know, three spark plug cylinder heads. I mean, Dale was a smart guy. And he was constantly trying things. And everything he did didn't work. But he'd try 10 yeah. things. And two or three of them had work. Well, guess what? You were two or three ahead of everybody else because they weren't trying them. Yeah. Or they were seeing what Dale was doing and then trying to copy it later. And obviously, they're a little bit behind. The the jump in funny car performance last year, uh, you know, when crew chief started rolling the headers back, and you know, I mean, they're gaining in tenths of seconds. The, the, everybody went back to the Batmobile as, yeah, the last time that we saw a, a big jump in performance in funny cars was – was, was that car? Yeah, because Bernstein was going to every race, resetting the record. Oh, just uh, killing you know, him. Just he was just killing yeah. him at every race, and and the records were going down and down and down. Yeah. And that is what we had last year. So that was a monumental monumental year last year. Yep. Uh, fourth on the list, I say Prudhomme Snake. Uh, you know the Army Funny Car. I mean that car won. And won, uh, I watched the car race at Orange County International when I was a kid. I mean that car was just. It was hard to beat. I mean, it yeah. won everywhere it went, and ev and everybody knew Army Car. You know, and it pulled up there. Sure. It's, you know, like Schumacher's car was a few years ago. He was just winning every week. Right. That car was the same way. And you know, Perdome, Perdome's kind of a cool character, and so oh, he's yeah. kind of you know, hey man, you know, and he just <laughs> it, it, he's he, you know he's he's cool. And uh, so that car was a was a pretty awesome car. And the last, but and actually maybe one of my favorite cars because one of my favorite guys is the Mongoose McEwen. Right. That, you know, and I didn't actually see that very car there run in person because I just didn't go to the races to see it run. But I've seen McEwen run and win several times. Yeah. And he's just a cool guy. He's a showman. Uh, you know, Perdome, I don't know if he would admit it, but a lot of Perdome's marketing success is because of McEwen. Yep. And McEwen's a cool guy. He's always been uh, friendly to me. We've had him on the show a couple yeah, times. Yeah, absolutely. He's a great guy. And, uh, just uh, that car is one of the coolest. Just Snake and Mongoose. Yeah. That was just a cool. You can't separate deal. the two. I mean, it's really hard to do that. I mean, when the, when the Mattel Hot Wheels came out, you, you sold them in, in two packs. That's the way they came. Right. You know, and, and so they were really uh, hard to separate. And, and it's funny that you 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 talk about the, the, that relationship in Force's piece. He said that almost the same thing that you said to the letter. I don't know if you know Snake wants to admit it, but you know a lot of that really? success came from McEwen because he found the money. Right. Well, McEwen, you know, he's a hustler. No I mean, doubt. McEwen is a hustler. No and he'll and he'll figure out. He's a marketing guy. Like he'll, hey, this is why this makes sense for you, and he'll go down and and figure things out. And he's been able to do that for a long time. No doubt. I mean, you know, everybody credits Bernstein for coming along and making drag racing big business, but 
You know what, McEwen, McEwen and, started that. Yeah, McEwen kind of was really, was on the forefront. He was of that. on the front yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. And no, and no question about that. Coming up, we'll talk to Dell Worsham uh, more about the history of funny cars and what he has going on Memorial Day weekend coming up. Really cool event and a uh, a big anniversary milestone anniversary coming up for Dell Worsham this weekend at Atlanta. And when we return, we will talk to the driver of the uh, the Parts Plus Great Clips Top Fuel Dragster Clay Milliken will join us next. This is The Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. More coming up right after this. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts during Clean Car Month for great deals on everything you need to keep your car looking new, like Black Magic Diamond Tire Wet, free after mail-in rebate. Leave your tires looking better than ever with Black Magic Diamond Tire Wet, free after mail-in rebate during Clean Car Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supplies. See store for details. O, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Ready to take the training wheels off your race scanner? Go to FanVision.com and upgrade your experience with FanVision. Not only will you be able to hear the race. Dale Earnhardt Jr. gets a good run. Drafting help from Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick. Jr. again pulls up alongside for the race lead. We'll see every moment through live video, instant replays, live stats, and more. Hi, I'm Jamie McMurray, driver of the number one Cessna Chevrolet. And I never go to the track without my FanVision. So go to FanVision.com to rent or buy yours today. NASCAR races are all about world-class, high-performance vehicles, and that's not just limited to the race cars. Freightliner Cascadia haulers transport the race cars and equipment from track to track 38 weekends of the year, keeping your favorite drivers in the race season after season. And from the engine to the seats to the dash, Freightliner specifically engineers its vehicles to give truck drivers a reliable, comfortable ride. Learn more about Freightliner truck models at FreightlinerTrucks.com. Welcome back to The Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Here's more with Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. One of our favorite guys on the planet joining us on the telephone right now, driver of the Parts Plus Great Clips, Top Fuel Dragster for Stringer Performance, Clay Milliken joins us. Hi, Clay. How y'all doing today? What's happening, buddy? Are you on the road? I am. I am uh, <laughs> so happy. I just made my way through... It's a big old traffic-filled city of Atlanta, so oh boy. I'm kind of starting to move again. So it's <laughs> a good thing. You got your? Are you in your truck? You to some of the listeners might think that's fun. You, <laughs> you and Donna, your <laughs> wife, uh, travel to a lot of the races in your truck, towing your travel trailer. So you kind of got your own home where you go around and go to the races. Yep, yep. We're in our, we're in the old Dodge with you know 100. And 70,000 miles on it in our little travel trailer that we used to motocross race out of. and Yeah, we do this a lot. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's our home away from home, and, and we really enjoy it. I mean, you know, we'll drive to, I don't know, close to half of the races. You know, we won't, we won't do the West Coast stuff, and we won't go, you know, like to Epping, but, you know, kind of a 10, 12-hour from Memphis, which covers a lot of the races. I mean, we really enjoy the travel part of it. This part of it, you know, the traffic part's no fun. <laughs> do, you, do you drive or does Donna drive? Well, you know, we, we split it up. I, As you have learned, <laughs> and you learned a whole lot of it yesterday, which I'm sure we'll talk about, I am not a morning person. <laughs> so she said, we're leaving at 6 o'clock this morning. I barely got out of bed. I drank some coffee, went right and got in the passenger seat, went to sleep. And about Birmingham, she's like, all right, your turn. So she... <laughs> She, uh, yeah, she she can wheel this thing good as anybody. She can back this trailer up. I mean, it, it doesn't matter to her. She can do it. <laughs> that's cool. Well, that's a couple days uh, in a row that you got up early because we got up early uh, and went and visited some high schools over there in your area, and that was cool. I got to tell you, that was uh, that was really fun, and I think we made an impact, and we're gonna we're gonna continue to make an impact for uh, you know over there in your hometown. What I, I'm I just can't tell you how proud of you and proud to be your friend that i am clay what a what a neat day we had yesterday but man i'll tell you what i i appreciate it and wasn't sure you know really had no idea how that was you know going to go i mean uh it's not like me and you had had bench race plenty but that was you know <laughs> quite a bit different kind of subject i mean you know we've, we've covered a lot of things you know, personally, you know, with, with everything we've had happen to us, but man, to, we spoke to 
2,000 kids yesterday. I mean, that's pretty crazy to think about that uh, two old drag racers and, uh, <laughs> you know, we're, we're out in these, these auditorium yesterday, you know, speaking to all these different kids and we got to talk racing. We got to talk of, you know, we got to talk breaks. We got to talk about so many things. And, and it was really awesome, you know, that we could ask those kids, you know, do you have any questions? And, and there was hands going up everywhere. And, and the truth is we ran out of time with, with the kids, every opportunity we had there, you know, that it was fun. I mean, I text you after you, you got gone that, uh, you know, I can't even say exactly what I text you, but I said, <laughs> we kick butt. Basically. <laughs> it was awesome. We did. It was awesome, and that was uh, that was that. What a great day, and what a what a neat deal in your town. Clay's town is kind of a small town for our listeners. I mean, he's a little bit outside of Memphis, very close to the Memphis racetrack, which uh, you know, which is just twenty miles or so outside of Memphis. But everybody knows Clay Milliken, and everybody loves Clay Milliken over there. And that was sure that was that was really fun. So Clay, talking about now, you're number five in the NHRA top field points. That car is ready to win, man. I mean, you are right there. That car, I believe it's capable of winning every race you go to. We talk usually before the races, and, and it seems like it's right there. And once that first NHRA win comes, I mean, you already know how to win races, but once that first NHRA win comes, I think it's not just going to be one. You, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start happening. Oh, I, I agree, you know, 100%. We've got a car now that – that can run with anybody, you know, and, and we're, we're the little team that could right now, you know, no doubt about it. We're a single car team and, and we work out of Doug's backyard and, and he affectionately calls, you know, our shop back there, the nitro barn, <laughs> it's basically a, a, a metal building behind his house. And we've got a group of guys that are so dedicated to what we're doing that it is just an absolute blast working with these guys. And, and it's awesome what, you know, Grubby has done in his, you know, first year as a crew chief. Now he's barely into his second year, and and what Lance has done to keep it all going. I mean, it's just crazy. And, and I know we can win. And Grubby keeps saying this. I just want to hurry up and get this first one out of the yeah. way. And I do too. And and the truth is, I'll be more than happy as long as we're in the countdown that we just get six in a row starting. You know, like around <laughs> empty time. I'd be okay That's with that. Right. That is a good <laughs> right? time to start winning. What? <laughs> Clay, what do you – and obviously you've talked about this, I'm sure, with Grubnick and, and Doug Stringer and Lance Larson. What's it going to take? What are you not doing now that you think it might take to get that first win notched? Uh, you know, I, I think probably the, or the there only, might there might not be anything. You know, I don't think there's really anything like holding us back. I mean, now if you ask this question – to Grubby, to David Grubnick. I keep saying Grubby. A lot of people may not know who it is. David Grubnick drove for 20 years. The last 10 years, you know, he, he drove for the Kalina team. But the, the one thing Grubby says that he feels he's lacking in is just, you know, a lot of times track conditions, you know, because he spent 20 years strapped in the car, not walking up and down the, you know, the racetrack. We see all these crews and teams and crew chiefs with, track specialist and all that. I mean, you know, so this past weekend's probably a good example. We had, you know, Terry McMillan had that, that unfortunate engine explosion right in front of us, and it was a 45-minute oh. delay. And, you know, Grubby was ready to jump, to jump off the top of the trailer because mm. he said he didn't make changes fast enough because it started getting so hot. And uh. he felt like he, you know, he cost us that round wind. And he did make changes, and, you know, we did smoke the tires, but – I don't think we're lacking anything. I mean, I've got 100% confidence in everything Grubby does. And, and again, if you had asked him that, that question, that's what he would have told you. But you got to look at this, how this car has been running. He's really not missing it very often. Right. Well, it, exactly. And the points will show that and we're talking about him being very close to a win. But you're fifth in points right now. That's a very consistent race car. It's getting up and down the, the track more times than not. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at the, the car that's in fourth place right now, it's Steve Torrance, you know, uh, a, a car that's got Richard Hogan, who's just unbelievable. You know, they got a little assistance from Alan Johnson over there. That's a car that's won twice already this year. Yes, sir. And he's only like a round and a half in front of us right yep. now. He passed us by going to the final round. I said he won twice. 
He's been to two finals, one win, one runner up. So, you know, yes, we're we're a consistent car. We we've, we've been going rounds and early part of the year that's more important than anything right now is, you know, keeping ourselves positioned in that top 10 so that we can win those last six races of the season. Hey, Clay, one of the neat things that you do, and you and I have talked about it a little bit, you do a lot of visiting with the folks at the Parts Plus stores and also the Great Clip haircut places. When you go to the cities to go to the races, you go there, visit them, get your haircut, you know, whatever, visit them. Uh, tell us about that and the relationship. You've had the Parts Plus guys for a long time. They've been on board with Oh, you. yes. I mean, you know, the, the Parts Plus guys, I get, I've done become like family with tons of these people that, what they do, you know, they bring people to the racetrack. Uh, we'll have, I don't know, it's like 5,000 people from Parts Plus will come through our hospitality area at the races this year. And, you know, we've done that for the last five years, and, and it's a lot of fun. And so you, you see a lot of the same people, and and I really, really enjoy that. And it's kind of cool when, you know, you see somebody – a second time or a third time and you know they're really fans and they enjoy what parts plus is doing and and of course i'm kind of still new to great clips last year was my first year with them and i will literally you know just randomly get on my phone and, and you know and just go great clips near me and, and i'll just go to the closest one and go in carry a hero card in tell them who i am and you know get a haircut and <laughs> they kind of get a kick out of it they're like well, are you supposed to be here? <laughs> no, nope, I just wanted to stop by and see you guys. You know, it's kind of fun, and yeah. I really enjoy that. I really do. Well, I just wish you had a more outgoing personality. You know, that's the only thing. You know, it, it if you had a little bit so more, much. a little bit more of that, uh, you know, <laughs> gosh, I mean, everybody would everybody would really know you. Obviously, I know, I know. I'm a little, you know, <laughs> microphone shy. You know, Doug probably noticed that yesterday when I kept interrupting him while oh, talking no. to all those no, kids. No. But. Well, what we were doing uh, for listeners, obviously, you guys couldn't have been there, but Clay and I had microphones and we were kind of throwing each other back and forth, little softballs. But we were we were basically giving these teenagers, these 2000 teenagers, the breaks ground school presentation. So we were, uh, even though we couldn't give them the behind the wheel part, we were giving them the ground school presentation. So uh, I got to tell you, Clay is a certified Briggs ground school instructor now. We, <laughs> we, <laughs> we, he is. We, we are making him a certified Briggs ground school instructor. I'm going to send you a diploma. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, it was, uh, it was really, really fun. And, and I actually did my homework, and I hope you noticed that. I really oh, yeah. did study, you know, I already knew what the Briggs program did. I mean, me and you've done, you know, public service announcements together and all that, but I wanted to be prepared. I mean, this is a big deal to me that there's a Briggs school, you know, coming to Memphis International Raceway, you know, and, and it's a big deal to me that, you know, Alan Johnson from Greenville, Tennessee helped make that happen, and, and I want to do everything I can to make sure that, you know, we have a, a successful school. And So, yeah, I've been doing my homework on the, the Brakes Ground School. That's a fact. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, you did, and what a – what a neat town you were in over there. And we are so excited about coming to Memphis and, and visiting. Uh, I know we'll see you before then again, probably, but what a, what a neat deal. Thanks so much, Clay. We appreciate it. And we're looking forward to it. Good luck in Atlanta this weekend. That'd be a good place to get your first win. Man, I am ready for it. I have made a final round here before I lost to Corey Mack in the final here. So I don't care who I race in the final this weekend, but I want to get that win light and, Yep. I really enjoyed uh, everything we did break yesterday right there in my little hometown, and, and thank you guys for letting me come on. Thanks, Clay. Clay Milliken, driver of the Great Clips Parts Plus Top Fuel Dragster, headed to Atlanta and, uh, and trying to mark that first win. Uh, speaking of first wins in Atlanta, coming up we'll talk about this guy's first win in an anniversary year. Dell Worsham joins us next. This is The Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. We'll have more for you right after this. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires will get you there. Whether you're running on dirt or running a job. Our dependable, high-quality tires are the perfect fit for your needs. For unmatched value, selection, and warranty with industry-leading road hazard protection, there's only one choice. Hercules Tires. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com or call 800-677-9535. 
Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Halsby Second Generation is your source for refurbishment of your existing trucks. We specialize in the reconditioning of vocational type trucks, ready mix trucks, dump trucks, and waste trucks. Extend the life of your current trucks today and give yourself a viable option to purchasing new units, especially in your lower volume markets. At Halsby Second Generation, we perform as much or as little work you require. For more information, visit Halsby.com. Don't miss the first ever Country 500, the Great American Music Fest at Daytona International Speedway. Memorial Day weekend. Join it's Luke Bryan, Jason Aldean, Kid Rock, hey, Lady Antebellum, Florida Georgia Line, Willie Nelson, and many more for three awesome days and nights of music, camping, and more on the infield of the World Center of Racing. Visit Country500.com for more information. You're listening to The Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Now, it's back to Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. Big thanks to Clay Milliken for joining us on The Straight Line today. And joining us right now on the telephone line is the driver of the DHL Toyota Funny Car and defending Funny Car champion, Del Warsham, joins us. Hello, Del. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good, man. You're at home. You're back in Villa Park. No way, man. Here's where I am. So... <laughs> So I, I went to Cincinnati yesterday, and then we had to do a DHL. They have a huge hub uh, at, at Cincinnati. Oh, DG, yeah. there. It's one of the biggest DHL hubs in the world. Went there and met with all their people on their uh, one of their one of their late night shifts from 10 p.m. to like after 12 a.m. And then got and then to get to Atlanta, I hopped in the truck and drove. I'm with the crew right now. We're going up I-85 North, uh, headed for the racetrack. And then tomorrow we have some Coca-Cola stuff to do, and uh, and, uh, and then we'll start racing on Friday. So I'm actually trucking up the road right now. Oh, man. Well, hey, tell us about this deal coming up. Uh, well, actually, first of all, I guess top speed at Houston. That car, your car right now is running, I mean, strong. You guys didn't let off anywhere from the end of last year until where you're no. at now. No, car's running great, man. You know, I, I keep getting picked off, man, just by just the tiniest amounts every single week. It seems like uh, I just need a little bit more. Uh, my reaction times haven't been bad, but but I guess I need a little more, man. There, there's a little more there on digging in there and you know when you have a car as fast as ours and you're racing other cars that are fast you know you're just racing by thousands so you know you win some and lose some it's just like right now i'm losing all the coast races now Dell, tell us about this deal coming up in san diego on may 28th sounds like a pretty cool deal uh you had yeah. something come together with your daughter racing junior dragsters and what tell us about this thing coming together yeah exactly well um we raced out this little track, this little, this little eight-mile track in uh, in North San Diego. It's called Barona, and it's on the Indian Reservation there. And and we go there, you know, maybe four or five times a year, and, and I race the junior cars there. Uh, and I'm just kind of looking it over with, with one of the track operators, the guy who runs the track, Rick Reynolds, and we're checking it out. And you know, I told him one day it might be cool, you know, to bring a funny car here, just put on a little bit of a like a little exhibition or a little race. You know, I can probably get a couple of the cars to uh, come up with me, and we can see what we can do. And uh, he was kind of receptive to it, and I was. And upon further talking together, we decided that you know this is a good date to do it. Um, we have a junior race going on that weekend, and, and you know, and I called Gary Dedgham up, and I called uh, uh, this Brandon Welch who drives, who's Truck Fuel's grandson, uh, and they were interested in doing it. And uh, I had my dad's car, so we needed a fourth car. So I decided I'd go ahead and just put together another new car for myself to drive. So <laughs> we're gonna bring two cars out of out of out of mine and my dad's shop, the Gary Dedgham car. And also the uh, the Brandon Welsh Chuck Beal car, and that uh, we're put on a little a little race up there, along with you know I recruited you know several nostalgia funny cars and all to come up and put on a show, and it should be a lot of fun. You know we're not gonna be able to go like real far there, but we can definitely go fast and we can entertain and we can we can have header flames and we can hit the throttle in the pits and we can do big burnouts and we can just kind of bring nitro racing well, into Southern California besides just Pomona. Yeah, right. That's the biggest thing is go down there to San Diego where they haven't seen fuel cars probably since Carlsbad days back in 100 wow. years ago. Yeah. So to go down there and run that, that is, that's pretty awesome. I, there, there are going to be a lot of new Nitro fans, I'm sure. I, I, I think so, yeah. I, again, like I said, it's not a real big track, but, uh, but, but we're not required to do anything real big anyway. So no, it should be a lot of fun. Where do they go, Dell, to find out more information about that Saturday, May 28th match race? Verona, uh, I think Verona, Verona drags. They have they have a website there, and uh, and then it's all over Twitter. You know, and little by little, it's getting out there. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and put something out here shortly uh, uh, on my Twitter, uh, Cletter's Twitter account for for uh, for Cletter Racing. We have it there already, and uh, and Ron Cap's gonna come out. He's gonna help out with it. His son will be racing, so he's, oh, cool. he's gonna get on it. He's gonna get on it. So if there's 
there's plenty of information, uh, information out there so about Bar- it. So Barona Drag Strip, B-A-R-O-N-A, which is down in Lakeside, California. So if you're down in the Southern California area and you want to go do something fun on Memorial Day weekend, that would be a good place to go. Yeah, it would. It could <laughs> be a lot of fun. Hey, uh, and Dell, we, when we uh, started the show, um, Doug uh, was uh, and, and I were talking about his favorite uh, funny cars, and I know that uh, in the fiftieth year of the uh, of the funny car, um, and I believe you were the first one to have yours on Fox. Uh, do you remember the uh, the your your top five funny cars of all time? I don't remember an exact order, but I mean I know my favorite funny car. You know, you yeah. know, and the Blue Max by far. You know, he was my favorite. You know, and even though I was in California, we had plenty of cool California funny cars to watch. Raven Beetle bring his act. The Orange County Raceway when I was a kid and raced against the Californians and, and waving their flag around and the presence and the show they put on just caught my attention right away. And, and every time he came to town, I was a huge Blue Max fan. So uh, he was definitely my favorite. Um, and then, you know, all the John Perdome cars of the Army Air, you know, with the big red and white blue stripes going down, you know, and, and the demeanor he carried was, was always in my top five. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think about who else I had in my top five back then. You know, I had another car that wasn't a real huge successful car, but they were fun guys, and I liked to watch them work, and they helped me out a lot with Andy and Ronnie Total. You know, I love stuff watching guys that just scrapping, man, just getting their car down the track and out there wanting to race, and that was another one of my favorite cars. Yeah, uh, uh, and a couple that, that Doug mentioned, uh, Jungle Jim's car, uh, that's, what, that's one if you're – uh, a drag racing fan. I mean, that just stands out. And uh, and the the Kenny Bernstein Batmobile. Uh, yeah. You know, and I, I I don't know if you've competed against that or 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 not, or that may have been just a little bit before your time. But I mean, that was right there. It was right before my time. Yeah, Kenny Bernstein had just moved to Top Fuel the year I started racing Funny Car. Yeah. So we didn't overlap there. But then he came back and raced the Monster Funny Car, and I got to race him in both Top Fuel and Funny Car before before he would have retired. Um, Still there? Yep, yep we're here. Oh, cool. Another <laughs> another car that was really cool, you know, that 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 I'm sure Doug remembers back in the day was the old uh, the old Super Shop funny cars. You know, the Pat Boxer oh, yeah. drove and all those guys. Those things, and, and then Ed McCullough later. Those things were those things were, were pretty much legendary. You know, so they're always fun to watch. And I love those cool cool shirts they had. Those big old brown shirts that I wore holes in them when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you used to be able to just take your driver's license down to a Super Shop store and they'd give you a free T-shirt just for. Showing up with your driver's license back. Yeah, big old win this car was across the bottom of yep. it, you know, and then, and then we all go to Ontario Motor Speedway, and somebody, you know, somebody gets lucky and win that car. Yeah, no, that was cool. Hey, tell us about this uh, three-time champ car that you're going to run on uh, Memorial Day. That is that is really awesome. It, it is. It is. It's cool. You know, I was kind of I was trying to think about what I should do, you know, for that for that event, and uh, and you know, it's not very often you get to just kind of do something where you don't really have to have sponsors. You can kind of do whatever you want, and uh, and I came up with working with uh, with Dave Fair and out of, out of Chicago and we built this old number one logo and then he, you know along with my two NHRA championships uh, a lot of people don't know or, or they forgot that I won the 1992 IHRA funding car, funding car championship also when you won top fuel I believe so uh, yeah so I'll put that in there and you know I can just kind of it's kind of a chance where I can just kind of do whatever I want design whatever I want I use this this this, this Toyota this Toyota camera I had and, and design this cool car man it's going to be neat like, like I said there's no real I don't want to have to do anything, so it's kind of cool to be able to do what you want. After 25 years in racing, Dell, what uh, what do you think is still your most memorable win? Is that first win in Atlanta, or you got it another? Is. I mean, that it was... is. Yeah, I mean, the first win in Atlanta, uh, winning win in that race at that age, and it was so unexpected, and it was just you know my dad, and myself, and one other crew guy showed up at the race, and we basically <laughs> recruited a crew when we got here, and uh, and and to take the relief off, the pressure off, kind of like what Clay's going through, and to, like the that. You know he hasn't broke through and got that first that first win yet, and I'm sure he's going to here shortly. If it's not this weekend, it's going to be real quick. But I remember telling my dad my first words to him were that if we did nothing else, we did win a race. You know, and and I knew how hard that was. I knew how special that was, and and maybe I'd never get another chance to do it. You just don't know. So so being able to win that race was definitely cool. When you when you show back up to Atlanta, I mean that obviously that's got to be the first thing that you you think of when it comes up on the schedule is getting that first win. It, it is, and, and, you know, and I have to be totally honest with you, I was so naive and so young, and I was just a crew guy. I didn't really have much to do with anything outside of just doing bottom end and build engines that, that when we won the race, I didn't even know there was a press room. I didn't know you even had to go do a press <laughs> I had no idea, and, and I got lucky because the two guys that won the race with me, which were I won with Kenny Bernstein and Bob Glidden, and they said, just oh. follow us. We'll show you how this is done. And uh, <laughs> I got to hang out with Bob Glidden, and, uh, 
and, and Kenny Bernstein and go to the press room and go talk to the press. And, and, uh, and you know, I, we didn't have cell phones back then. I remember I was on a payphone and I called our partner at the time who didn't come to the race, Ron Todd, and I kept telling him that we won the race and he didn't believe me. I'm like, well, well, fine. You can just call my mom and ask her then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was always the coolest thing. I liked uh, always we raced at a lot of the same races together and had a lot of fun. But you racing with your dad. And your dad was just such a cool guy, going to the races and and working on the car and knowing everything about the car, building the cars, building the engines. Just uh, always, just a lot of fun racing with you guys. It, it, it was. I, I remember one time, and this just I'll take you back to a funny story. But it's probably it was maybe 1989 or 1990. And we were in, in Brainerd, Minnesota, and it was just I was there by myself working on the car, and I took the entire clutch control box apart. And Frank Bradley and his son walked up, and they said, who's going to put this back together? And I said, I'm going to put this back together. They just couldn't believe that somebody 19 years old could do that. <laughs> <laughs> and Frank but Bradley, I mean, I, you're, lucky, yeah. you sh- you're lucky that he didn't steal a part on you so you didn't have the part to put it back together. <laughs> and make it difficult. But, I, you know, I grew up around Southern California. And I grew up with Bob Brooks of AFT. And, you know, I, I spent all my time at, at Bob Brooks' shop at AFT or hanging around down at uh, Kenny Bernstein's shop. It was down on Main Street in Orange with Dale Armstrong and those yeah. guys. And Race Pack was there. So I spent a lot of time around the cars when I was a kid. And, and do my way around at a pretty young age. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, no doubt about that. I remember seeing you working on the car and, and uh, being plenty dirty from working on it and then putting your driving suit on, hopping in and driving it, too. So. It, oh, it was. You, you know, my, my nickname back in the day, you know, I first started driving with, with especially with NHRA Safety Safari, with, with Lefty and Double R and all them working on You know, my nickname was Wash Rag when I was a kid because I was just the dirtiest <laughs> kid on the track. There was no doubt about it. <laughs> hey, uh you may not know this, but um, I'll, I'll ask anyway. Uh, when is uh, when will we see your dad's car out uh, out, out on the circuit? Uh, you know, I don't have we don't have an exact date set up with it at, at this time right now. Yeah. I, I mean, I suspect besides besides the race at Verona, where where we're going to run the McLeod car with Paul Lee driving my dad's regular car, and then I built this new car I'm going to drive. Um, probably around Sonoma, I would say. I don't I don't really foresee it coming out much before that. We're pretty busy. And, and uh, with, with the DHL car, I don't have a whole lot of time on my hands to, to, to help out right now. So probably Sonoma, Seattle, and then hopefully we'll get something together and bring it out to Indy. Cool. Oh, that'll be great. Well, hey, I'm going to be in Villa Park this July, so I'm going to uh, drive by and ring on your doorbell there. I'll be over yeah. visiting my mom. <laughs> Anytime, man. Just just come by. You know, if you go up to center, I built that new big old huge wall. You'll see it there. You'll, you'll, you'll know which house is mine. <laughs> yeah, I know which one. You got the one. You had the sign in your backyard there that you could drive by when you, uh, you know, I, I remember seeing right. it driving by. So, man, Del Warsham, great job uh, last year on your championship. Great season going this year. Looking forward to great, uh, more great things this year from the DHL Funny Car, Del Warsham and Team Coletta. All right, guys. I hope to talk to you next week after a big win this week. All right. Del Worsham, after getting his first one 25 years ago in Atlanta, uh, and looking for another one this weekend at Atlanta Dragway. Uh, when we return, we'll talk more funny cars here on The Straight Line. You're listening to The Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. More right after this. Restore lost fuel economy and eliminate rough idle with Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner. Right now at O'Reilly Auto Parts, buy two bottles of Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner and get one free. Clean clogged injectors and increase fuel efficiency with Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner. Buy two, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Race cars are finely tuned for maximum performance. Freightliner trucks are too, taking into account all the factors that drive your profitability and lower your real cost of ownership. Efficient aerodynamic designs paired with the integrated Detroit powertrain maximizes fuel efficiency, uptime, quality, connectivity, and safety to give truckers peace of mind and a better return on investment. Find out how to lower your real cost of ownership at rco.freightlinertrucks.com. At Victory Junction, it's simple. We believe every child, no matter their diagnosis or disability, deserves the chance to just be a kid. So we provide a medically safe environment where children who live in a world of hospital stays and doctor's visits are free to do everything from riding horses, zip lining, swimming, fishing, and bowling, all at no cost to the camper. The experience inspires confidence, builds self-esteem, and changes the life of every child who comes here. Help us change a child's life at victoryjunction.org. 
It's the Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Now here's Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. And a huge thanks to O'Reilly Auto Parts for helping us out uh, on the Straight Line. They were uh, actually the first sponsor to come on this show, and uh, they're still with us today. Hey, um, the O'Reilly Shredder, it's a great, it's a full-size stock car, and it goes around to O'Reilly Auto Parts all over the country and uh, right now it is on tour. It is in the Midwest, and we want to tell you where uh, some of those places are. Coming up on May 17th, uh, this is all in the Arkansas area. Uh, you could head down to uh, Corning on West Main Street from 11 to 4 uh, in Malsden in uh, Missouri, North Douglas Street on Wednesday, May the 8th. Um, in Pine Bluff, Missouri, or on, I'm sorry, on Poplar Bluff, Missouri, May 19th. North Westwood Boulevard is where the Shredder will be. On Friday, May the 20th, the Dexter, Missouri store, Highway 60 West uh, from 11 a.m. to two, uh, to 4 p.m. And in um, Sixton, Missouri, on Main Street from 11 to 4, that is on Saturday, May 21st. Thanks to O'Reilly Auto Parts for supporting everything that we do here on the Straight Line. I looked up John Force's uh, top well, it, it started as the top five funny cars, and, and of course, in Force John doesn't never know where to stop. No, <laughs> no, it ended up being about seven or eight. Yeah. Uh, it, it, but it was, I mean, just some great stories. I mean, if, and already shared one uh, about Lieberman and uh, racing down the return road, and and but he was full of them. Uh, but uh, a couple of that he had mentioned, and I want to kind of bounce off you. Uh, first, one of his first, right off the top of his head, uh, was Joe Paisano. Oh yeah, Joe uh, P. And and Paisano was he was a big help to me when I started racing. I I I was friends with Paisano. And Paisano, the neat thing about Paisano, that was his hobby. Like Paisano owned Vinolia Pistons, right? Uh, and some other companies. But Paisano, pretty successful business guy, but a long time funny car racer. He loved his funny cars, and his stuff was nice. Like his cars were always prepared perfectly like that was his hobby was working on that car and every all his trucks his trailers everything was black like his thing was shiny black looked really really good and his cars ran really good too i know mike dunn won yeah. indy in his car mm -hmm. uh he won he won some big races as a part-time guy like they didn't race every week but he'd come out when paisano was out racing he was a threat. Yeah, it, Pizano not only was a like you said a, a business guy did his own thing but he uh, Help launch the careers of of some guys that uh, ended up, you know, driving his stuff and going on to bigger and better things. Yeah. Mike Dunn being one of those guys. Yeah. And the Ace McCullough, uh, I don't know how many different cars, uh, just in funny car that uh, Ace was in, but uh, Force mentioned. Um, Ed the Ace, and uh, I mean, he's well, that Ravel Revolution right cars there. one I yeah. think of uh, Larry Miner with the Miller cars. You yeah, know, the, I, the I Miller watched, car is the one I and, and I was lucky enough. I worked with uh, McCulloch. McCulloch was my crew chief in two thousand. I don't know five or somewhere somewhere in two thousands. And he's a neat guy, in, in, fun to work with, smart guy, and was a he was a great race car driver too. Won plenty of races. He was he's still I'm sure one of the top uh, funny car winners at Indianapolis. So I think he's won Indy like four or five times, right? Which is not easy, nope. right? Everybody goes to Indy planning on winning and he was uh, some of those wins came when he was just a west coast guy he traveled out there and won indy i mean he's yeah. yeah he's a he's a pretty cool guy what else you got um the shy town hustler was uh, another oh, one, one you know because so many drivers drove you know ended up in that car he just mentioned the shy town hustler but i mean i i don't i can't remember I mean, going way back I mean, way before my time, your time, you know, yeah. that, that Chi-Town Hustler was out there. But, I mean. Well, you, Force you was such a big part of that because of Austin Coyle. Austin Coyle was, you know, the Chi-Town Hustler guy. Yeah. And, obviously, them winning championships with Frank Hawley and then Austin Coyle coming over with Force. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And that car was a tough car. Always a, always a winning car. Yeah, and uh, you couldn't go through a Hot Rod magazine uh, in the day without, you know, a picture of the Chi-Town Hustler. It, not only did it win races, it won championships, but it was it was always out there. It was it, it match racing. 
you know, no matter who was doing it, whether it was Holly or whether it was Schumacher or, you know, whoever, you know, they, it was always out there. And, and one of the leading cars, I mean, that's, that, that one is just burned into my memory. Yeah. No, that was a, that was definitely one that was out there. And like I said, some of those early ones I would think would be uh, favorites for force too, would be like Jack Christman car and Diner Don Nicholson funny car. Uh, there's some, you know, there's some definitely pretty cool funny cars running around. Yep. And uh, the last one that he mentioned, uh, and I didn't know that there was a relationship between uh, that car and the people who had it and him was, was the L.A. Hooker car. Um, you know, I mean, and that goes, I mean, that, that was more West Coast. Yeah. Uh, uh, but um, that was one that came up and one that I didn't see compete, but I saw uh, on the West Coast, they would bring it in, yeah. uh, you know, as a uh, um, as yeah, a show I'd, car. Yeah, I'd see that car run at Pomona and Orange County, some of those places. And it was, they were a local, you know, they were local guys that would just go out there and, you know, they had the desire. They were weekend warriors, you know, going yeah. out there and running their car. Pretty fun. Yeah, I- exactly. All right. Um, we got uh, more of the uh, Straight Line coming up. This is the Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. More coming up right after this. Scan all the reactions and latest word from the track immediately following each race weekend on MRN's Motorsports Monday with Woody Kane and Joey Meyer. Johnny Sauter drives the number 21 Chevrolet Silverado. You know, I didn't know that uh, necessarily we'd spend the first race of the year. Log on to MRN.com every Monday at noon Eastern or stream the program from the MRN Media Center on demand. It's MRN Motorsports Monday only on the Motor Racing Network. Live sports are the one true reality entertainment where a single dramatic moment can become timeless. In NASCAR, Motor Racing Network's live broadcasts elevate your senses to the sights, sounds, and struggles taking place on the racetrack. Keselowski to the bottom of the racetrack. He tries to slide up. Newman is there. Sideways is Keselowski. The power of radio to the imagination of the listener. Tune in to the Motor Racing Network. Visit MRN.com for an affiliate list in your local area. NHRA drag racer Doug Herbert here to talk about safe driving. In early 2008, my two sons were killed in a car accident that was caused by speeding and inexperience. After the accident, I learned that over 6,000 teenagers each year are killed in car accidents, so I formed a nonprofit organization called Brakes. Brakes stands for Be Responsible and Keep Everyone Safe. Please visit our website at putonthebrakes.org to learn more about responsible driving and what you can do to keep our roads safe. Welcome back to The Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Here's more with Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. Thanks for being with us on The Straight Line. Uh, just heard the Brakes PSA there. And uh, uh, coming up, uh, headed to Detroit, is that right? Yeah, this weekend we're going to be in Detroit at the Mopar facility in Centerline, Michigan, just outside of Detroit. So got that coming up. We're also uh, going down to the Bradenton, Sarasota area next weekend. We've got another class down there, and I think we've also got one in Orange County, California, at the same time. So we've got wow. we've got some stuff going on all around the country, and we added up uh, the other day, and we're going to end up with uh, about 200 brakes classes this year. <laughs> so are you kidding me? No, 200 brakes classes in 2015. Wow. So I didn't we were that. we were forecasting about a 50 percent gross and growth gross 50 <laughs> percent oh. growth, and now it, it's ended up being over 100 percent growth this year. So we're we're uh, we're we're hustling right now. We've got an incredible team over at Put on the Brakes. So go to putonthebrakes.org. Check that out. If you've got a teen driver or you come out, uh, you like to volunteer for different events that we do, golf tournament, uh, driving school events, all this stuff, we're always looking for volunteers. We're looking for supporters of any sort. So check it out. Um, wanted to talk to you about uh, doing these local – match races, uh, show cars, you know, sort of events like Del Worsham has on Memorial Day weekend. Right. I mean, th- that was kind of a staple of drag racing. Not as much anymore. And I'm glad Dell's doing something like that. You know, well, because- especially funny cars, but top field cars too. Yeah. I did a lot of match racing. I matched race Shirley Muldani. We used to go match racing because she kind of took a couple years off from, from NHRA racing and – I would go around and match race her a lot of times, trying to think who else we would match race. Actually, Dell, Dell Worsham and his family had a top field car. I match raced them a bunch of times. So there was a lot of match racing going on. But you, 
the cars weren't as expensive to run. And, uh, you know, especially if you had a couple crew guys that were full-time crew guys, you wanted to keep them busy. So let's go over here uh, to maybe to English Town on a Wednesday night and match race and sell a bunch of T-shirts and have some fun, run the car. And uh, unfortunately, I, I think it's a bummer that that's kind of went yeah. away because the cars are so expensive and there's not uh, – you know, you've got 10 guys to bring in to go do a match race because there's 10 guys who work on the car now. Yeah. It's just, eh, that's a little bit unfortunate. But I guess that's where the nostalgia cars have come in, right. uh, like Dell's doing at the race out there in May. They're going to have those nostalgia funny cars, and those are cool. Yeah, they and really they can are. run those yep. without as much cost, without as many guys having to work on them. But they're still burning nitro, and they're still making a lot of noise, and they still do big burnouts, so yeah. pretty cool. Uh, I remember uh, stories of you uh, match racing Tommy Johnson, yeah, in, uh, in in Iowa, in, in Eddyville, Iowa. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we raced in Eddyville, Iowa. That's actually a funny story there. When you're, uh, we were racing in Eddyville, Iowa, and all of a sudden, Tom Arnold came up, and I'm looking at this guy. I'm going, man, he looks pretty familiar. I know, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. guy's a movie star. And so he came over and started talking, and he says, "Oh yeah, well, I just live right down the street, and I heard these cars running. And I came over here to check it out." And I was Whoa, like, hang on, and, hang on, hang on. Tom Arnold was Tom just Arnold hanging, lived uh, in. Eddieville, Iowa, or Ottumwa, Iowa, or something. He yeah, lived right? Right there. No close kidding. Enough of, of, uh, you know, that he could hear the fuel cars running at the racetrack. <laughs> so, yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> but those were opportunities, not only for you to maybe do a little, you know, test and tune or whatever. Some of those tracks, maybe you didn't want to do that. But this was an opportunity to market yourself. This was a, sure. a time to get out in front of fans, and like you said, Sell a bunch of T-shirts, sell a bunch of posters. Well, but you that's know, that how you made thing. fans. That's why John Force exactly. has so many fans now. I would go almost everywhere that I did a match race. John Force was there match racing too, <laughs> yeah. and that's how the 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 popularity that he's got in the sport is because of that. It's you know it's not necessarily because of TV, but a lot because of TV. Obviously, yeah. Force got a he's got a big personality and he's a fun guy to to talk to and a fun guy to watch. But having that one to one interaction with fans at the races is what got John Force so popular. And I don't know if everybody is forgetting that uh, right. maybe nowadays, but that's a lot where it came from. And I, I, I'm, I was lucky enough to be, uh, you know, one of the more popular guys at NHRA races racing. And it was because of that. I was match racing on the weekends that we weren't racing yep. at an NHRA race. We were racing at an IHRA race, or we were match racing at Eddyville, Iowa, or match racing at English Town, New Jersey, or match racing at Highway uh, Dragway 131, or yeah. you know, wherever. I mean, that is you know, that's the fans love that because there's not so much pressure on the drivers have time to talk to the fans and and uh, you know mingle. It, it, sometimes they were you know just a couple of fuel cars getting together and and just hitting the loud pedal yeah. hitting the loud pedal sometimes they were really big uh back in my uh, old stomping grounds in in Oregon and Woodburn drag strip uh yeah. they had 32 funny cars they had a uh, you know yeah. a, 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 that was their big promotion of the year uh oh, yeah. you know on an on an off weekend where uh Seattle had 32 dragsters so uh, they did that for years, and then Woodburn said, well, hey, we can do something like that. And yeah. they came up with uh, 32 funny cars. But that was one of my baptisms of, of um, Nitro and, and going Nitro. to the, you know, was um, was 32 funny cars. the old, the old uh, commercial, Sunday. <laughs> yep, yep, 32 funny cars. And yeah. then they would go down this list of drivers that were going to yeah. be there. And, it, you know, it, it paid really well. It, it, you know, they had to, to to bring those guys in. But all the West Coast guys would come. You know, Snake would be there more times than not. You know, Ace, um, Force, you know, back, yeah. you know, when he, when he really started uh, yeah. getting going. I remember on. those same things down in Southern California where I grew up at Orange County Raceway. They had 64 oh, funny my cars. Lord. And they'd get all the funny cars on the track at the same time, lined up with the top up, yeah. and fire up the engine. So 64 funny cars running at one time. <laughs> that was pretty cool. I remember that when I was a kid. Oh, that I was, bet. That was 40 years ago, and I still remember that. Oh, I mean, just the, just the haze and nitro. Over the track yeah. had to have been you know, just oh, yeah. I I intense, but uh, yeah, that I mean that was really my one of my first times of um, you know that I can remember about drag racing was going to the, to the thirty two funny cars yep. and, and 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 hearing those commercials. Now that I'm a radio guy and been in in the in the professional radio for you know the last twenty five years, listening to those commercials, um, 
you know, with the you know the big deep voice guy, and yeah. uh, you know, because he did all of those. Um, you know, that was uh, that's, well, that's really cool. Like Steve Evans used to do the ones uh, for Orange County International yeah. Raceway. It seems like uh, or Bill Donor, a couple of different guys, but. Those were those were cool commercials back yeah. in the day, you know. Saturday it, night, it, it, right? They had the fox hunt, and they had the oh gosh, Hawaiian Tropic, and all, you know, all, there was always something. Where I went to race at Orange County International Raceway, there was uh, El Toro Marine Base next door, so there was always the Hell's Angels. So you had the Hell's Angels and the Marines, and when they got together for the fox hunt, there was always a big fight, you know. So then it was like, <laughs> uh oh, time to get out of here. Yeah, you know, for me being a young kid oh boy here and we got the hills angels and the marines let's Ooh, go <laughs> yeah yeah that is, yeah that would not be good headed to atlanta dragway um looking at the forecast and we're we'll keep our fingers crossed that uh w- weather is supposed to be really good last year I, I was there and um it was hot i mean it was really hot it's not going to be uh quite as warm uh but uh it, atlanta is one of those places that it's been there a while um, so it's got some of its, it's, it's quote, got some personality. It, yeah. It's got some personality. <laughs> it's, it's got some character. Uh, what do you remember of, uh, from that and in, in some of the tricks that you had to get down that racetrack? Uh, you know, the biggest thing that I remember, uh, racing in Atlanta and we've actually went down there several times to do brakes classes. So I've been down there recently. The shutoff area in Atlanta is really rough. So as you're watching the TV shows on Fox this weekend, Keep an eye on those cars going through the shutdown area because they're bouncing around. That's a it's a rough shutdown area in Atlanta. So that that is probably the biggest thing that I remember down there. It, the the cars are made to to bend, uh, you know. I mean, when they when they launch, they're made they to kinda, flex they're, yeah. or flex. Maybe not bend. Uh, if flex is yeah, that's a better word for it. <laughs> so I mean, they do get they do get bouncy. Um, as, as a driver, is there anything that you can do, or you there's, just have to ride that out? There's nothing that you can do, and uh, I think the the funny cars are probably a little bit worse than the dragsters. But going down the track and hitting, you know, it's like it's just old pavement, and yeah. uh, it's unfortunate that it's like that. But that's the way it goes. But it's hard on the cars, you know, bouncing and jarring as they as they're th- going through the shutdown area. So that's uh, you know, that's a little bit of a tough thing. Probably one of the memorable things at Atlanta would be. Uh, Seems like there's been some pro stock crashes there over yep. the years. Yeah, so there have. I, Bob Glidden's particularly, yes, I remember. I remember you know, that. Bob crashed the car. The car destroys it. He hops out and throws, <laughs> throws his fire his suit over the engine. He didn't want anybody to see his engine. So that's, yep. that's pretty cool. But Atlanta is a cool place. Before we had the drag strip here in Charlotte, that was the place that you had to go. That was all the locals went to Atlanta yeah. because that was our closest drag strip. And Atlanta's a little bit of maybe the wrong name for that track because it's quite a ways from Atlanta. It's on Interstate 85, probably 75 miles or so north of Atlanta, almost probably closer to Greenville, Spartanburg, South Carolina than it is actually to Atlanta, but also not far from Charlotte area. Yeah. Yeah, So um, right out here is Highway 85. You get on that. And you keep going until you get to Commerce, Georgia, <laughs> and that's where it is, and that's what I'll do uh, on the first thing Saturday morning. So uh, anybody that's going to be there, uh, look forward to uh, seeing where you. Where are you going to be Atlanta. hanging out so they can come by and see you? Uh, I, I will just be all over the pits, uh, walking around during uh, in in between rounds, and then you know up in the media center to uh, talk to the NHRA people that uh, you know we've uh, got to know over the years, and yep. you know some of the some of the other media people. Uh, obviously, you know try to get to uh, the, over the Fox sports booth and talk to Dave Reap and, and Tony Pedregon and uh, talk to those guys as well. There you go. So it'll be, uh, it'll be fun. Big thanks to Clay Milliken and also Del Worsham for joining us on the straight line today. And uh, we're looking forward to talking to the winners next week from Atlanta Dragway. So for everybody here at MRN.com, for Doug, for Robbie, for Daryl, I'm Marty. We will talk to you next week here on the straight line. You've been listening to The Straight Line, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Tune in again next Thursday at noon Eastern on MotorRacingNetwork.com and the MRN app. The Straight Line is the show for drag racing fans and is brought to you by Hercules Tires. This program is also available on demand at the MRN.com Media Center, or you can download it through iTunes or Stitcher. The Straight Line is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.